Hello, it's Keith here and this is lesson 7 of the platform specific series of my ARM assembly programming tutorials. We're going to be making a noise again and this time we're going to be making a noise on the Nintendo DS. Now in these tutorials we write something I call Chibi Sound. It's a simple sound driver for little beeps and bloops, very basic stuff for our Pong games, Space Invaders, nothing too amazing but it's quick and easy to get something started and the idea is that once you can figure out how to make some sounds on your DS hopefully you can tweak the code and make something a bit better because this is just the basics. The benefit of it is for me is um, I make my multi-platform games, um, I want a sound driver on every single system and I don't want to have to spend the rest of my life writing it basically so um, this is something I can quickly get some sound in a game even if it's not amazing it like allows me to get moving pretty quickly so we're going to have a look at this today now chibi sound takes a single byte parameter there's six bits which define the pitch of the sound there's one bit that defines the volume either low or high and there's one bit that defines the noise either a clean tone or a noisy distorted tone and that's what we're going to be programming today now unfortunately just like with reading the pen Doing sound on the Nintendo DS means that we have to use the ARM7. That's the second processor, the main processor is the ARM9 that our code runs on. So we're going to have to write a subprogram on the ARM7 and get the two to communicate and um, negotiate with what sounds are going to be made. Let's get over to today's source code and let's hear it in action, so to speak. Okay, so here's the Nintendo DS. Now you can hear the pitch going down. And then when we went over hexadecimal 80, we get distorted sounds. And now we get loud, and then we're going to get quiet tones again. So there we go. So we, we can make some sounds here just based on that bottom byte there. So the parameter byte here is in this format. We've got six bits for the pitch there, one bit for the volume, and one bit for the noise, one being on. So that's what we're passing to Chibi Sound, and that's what's making the sound. Now, like with the joystick and the pen, we're having to define some bytes of data that we can use to pass data to the ARM7. And in this case, we're sending it rather than receiving it. Now, one byte will be the chibi sound byte that we just mentioned, that is the sound we want to make. And the other byte is a kind of flag that says, hey, I've just updated the sound, Up update what you're making the sound driver do. So we're gonna have a look at how we do that. Now, the Chibi Sound code on the ARM9 is very simple. All we're doing is basically transferring the byte, which is the new um, sound command, which is the six bits of the pitch, the one bit of the volume, the one bit of the noise. And then the second one is just a one, and we write a one to that, and that tells the Chibi Sound driver on the ARM7, hey, look at what I've just stored in the first byte and get processing it, and then once it's processed it, we'll set it back to a zero. So if we never set this, then the sound would never play. Now the rest of the work is being done on the ARM7. Now our ARM7 code is specified by our cartridge header here. We're specifying this and we're loading it in at this memory address here, and then it will run on the ARM7. Now the ARM7 code is here. This is what's transferred, and we're including this module called Chibi Sound Driver. And this is the ARM7 code that's going to do the dirty work for us. Okay. Now the first thing we're doing here is we're loading in that second byte and we're seeing if it's a zero. If it is a zero, we're just skipping over. We're not doing any more work because nothing's waiting for us to do. Now on the Nintendo DS, when we tell the sound chip to play, it plays indefinitely. We're not having to stream bytes of sound data to a chip or anything. So if a sound is being made and we want it to keep being made, we don't do anything. So we can just skip over there. If we, however, have a new command, we're going to have to process it and check what that command is. If the command is a zero, we're going to silence things using this command here. If it's not a zero, we're going to go down here and actually process the sound. Now, all sound on the Nintendo DS is digital. So we're creating some sound wave samples that we're going to pass to the chip to make it make a sound. Now, these are 8-bit sound samples, and this is going to be a square wave going between 0 and minus 127, so we're making a square wave there. Alternatively, we have a noisy wave here, which is basically random numbers. So those are our two sound samples, and these are 128 bytes in length. Okay. Now, if we want to turn off the sound, we use port 400500. Now, this is going to set the master volume, and what we're doing here is we're just setting the volume to 0, and that will turn off the sound. Now, if we, in fact we're making a sound, we're going to need to do some other stuff instead. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check that the sound hardware is turned on. It's possible to power down the sound hardware. And so we're using port 400304 here. And the bottom bit is the sound hardware. And we write a 1 to that to turn the sound on. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to allocate a sound sample 
to our sound playing. Now we've got those two possible sound samples here and we want to write those to 4000-4x4. Now I need to explain that X, the Nintendo DS has a total of 16 sound channels which is incredible. So it can play 16 different samples at the same time. Now the X is one of these channels from 0 to F, 0 to 15. And so in this case we're just going to use channel 0 but if you wanted to use multiple channels at the same time you'd want to swap that X with a different number. So we're going to select the source of the sound channel, which is going to basically be the memory address, either wave tone or wave noise, depending on the parameter that Chibi Sound has passed. And it's the top bit that defines whether we're making a noise or not. So we're just testing that top bit and we're loading the address of either the tone sample or the noise sample into that port 400404 here to set the sound sample of that first channel, channel zero. Next, what we're doing is we're setting the loop and the length of the sample. Now, it's possible to define a sample as having a looping part. So you would maybe have a um, ramp up in your sample and then a repeating part, and you would loop that repeating part. Now, our samples are simple. We're just repeating the whole lot. Um, so that's what we're doing here. We're specifying the loop to start from the first byte here, and we're setting the length of the sample. Now, the length of the sample is being specified as 32 bytes. The sample is actually 128 bytes because we have to divide it by four. That's the way this works. So we're defining 32 there, even though our sample is actually 128. That's the correct value. Next, we want to set the pitch that we're going to play back the sample. We do this with 4004x8, 408 in this case for channel zero. And this is the frequency. So we've got six bits of frequency and we're just shifting them into the correct location here and transferring them to that register to set the pitch that the sound sample will play back. We've got a lot of flexibility there. It's really nice to have such an easy way of playing sound samples. I'm used to things like the spectrum when sometimes you have to hand crank it yourself and transfer individual bits to the hardware. So I do like this automated way of doing things. So we set the pitch now. Next, we need to set our master volume with 400500. This is fixed, this isn't related to the particular channel. We're setting the volume to maximum here and we're turning the master volume on here. We just transfer this to 400500 and that will turn the sound on. But that's just the master volume. We also need to turn our individual sound channel on. And we're doing that with 4004XO, which will be 400 in this case. So we're selecting that here. We need to get the one bit of volume from our parameter that was passed to Chibi Sound. We need to move that into the top volume bit position here to set the volume. Um, all these bits to one will be the loudest, of course. And we also need to start the sound with the top bit here. We need to set the repeat with these bits here. And we also need to set the format. Now, the format we're using is format zero, which is an 8-bit signed sound sample, which you can see here. I did make the stupid, stupid mistake here of doing 0 to 255-0255, and I was wondering why there was no sound. That would have worked great if it was unsigned, but it's signed and 255 is minus 1, and going between 0 and minus 1 is almost unhearable. So it didn't work very well. That took me quite an embarrassingly large amount of time to figure out. But anyway, um, that's all we need to do now to make our sound here. That will actually play the sound. And as I say, this hopefully is a nice little sample that you can start off and make something a bit better with because it's nothing particularly incredible, is it? But um, as I say, uh, once you've figured out how you can make a sound and how you can you know, cope with the, um, the challenges of having two processors um, doing the job of making the sound and running your program, hopefully you'll be able to use this as a template for something a lot better. Anyway, that's what we're going to be covering today. We've looked at how to make some simple sounds on the Nintendo DS, and this does work on the real hardware. I've tested it. So hopefully um, you can download this and give it a go, and you'll be able to make some sounds on the DS. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, you know, please like and subscribe, because I want to make more DS uh, tutorials, but it's a lot of extra work covering an extra system like this, you know, covering the ARM as well as the Z86502680000. So I need to be sure people are interested in it and going to watch it, so it would help me out if you liked and subscribed. Whatever you do there, I wish you all the best with your ARM programming, and I hope you enjoy the Nintendo DS. Thanks for watching today, and goodbye.